Hey, welcome to Rust Revival Garage. My name is Tim. Um, I'm in the middle of some projects right now. Just got the engine back in my 1968 Pontiac Le Mans, and I'm wanting to do all the rewiring, finish the rewiring, basically. Uh, I needed to get the engine back in in order for me to do the start charge wiring. Uh, you know, to hook up everything to the engine, hook up everything to the alternator, to the starter. Uh, but I stopped right in the middle of it because I thought, before I started assembling everything, and I thought, hey, this is a good time to install my oil pressure gauge. There's nothing back in the back of the engine. Uh, the distributor's not in, or I can easily take it out. Uh, there's no wiring. Nothing else is going on back there. So I thought, now's the time to do that oil pressure gauge. So I picked up a new oil pressure gauge set from Autometer. I'm going to install that. Um, the one thing that I'm going to do differently in this video, though, though is a lot of people will install the gauge with this nylon tubing that comes with it. And so many people tell you, hey, the nylon tubing can be garbage. If as soon as it gets hot, psh, it's gone. you got oil everywhere. Um, they also recommend maybe doing the copper or brass tubing um, as a replacement. But I thought I would actually go a next step. I thought I would actually do AN fitting lines to do my oil pressure gauge. So I've got a gauge long enough to go from the back of the block to the back of my gauge under the dash. And so that's something a little bit different. So follow along with me to see if I can get this correct. Let's get to it. In a Pontiac engine, there are two places I can put my oil pressure gauge line. Um, down here by the oil filter, um, that's where the plug-in goes that gives you the idiot light. And um, I could go ahead and tee it into there. Um, but you can also do it uh, at this bolt up here. This is a 3 8 inch bolt. A lot of people say that this can be a good one because it gives you more of a true what's going on in your engine oil pressure. This one is down by where the oil is meeting up with the oil filter and you do get a higher reading here. Um, some say that air can mix in with this up here and not give you a, as true of a reading, but again, this, this would feel like to me as something that might actually be going on with the engine. So again, I'm gonna try to put it up here, run it through the firewall along with the um, water pump gauge. Okay, so here are the pieces that I picked up. Um, this is going to go down in the hole on the block. This is the one uh, adapter that I had to pick up that goes from the quarter inch down to the eighth that will attach to the back of the gauge. And then this line will run from the block to the gauge and hopefully I'll get a great AM fitting line connection. We'll be good to go. And I want to make sure that I'm using the yellow tape because this is the kind of tape that is good for PTFE thread sealing. Uh, it's great for fuel, oil, just about any kind of thing that you want that is chemically abrasive. Uh, you don't want to use the white stuff. That The white stuff can work down in that for your coolant, for the... Uh, for the coolant gauge, for the temperature gauge, but you don't want to use this, you want to use this tape, the yellow tape, to make your good connections here. All right, let's see if we can get this 56 year old bolt out. I think what I'm gonna to try to do first is tighten it. See if I can break that seal. And then we'll see if we can loosen it. There's a little bit of tightening. Ah, come on. Change in plan. Of course, I stripped out that hole. So I think I'm going to try to tee it off of where the oil filter is. Not tee it off, but attach it basically where the 
idiot light sensor goes in. Okay, there we go. That's where I'll put it then, right down there. Okay, I've got my yellow tape on here. <clears throat> See if I can get this started. Okay, I've got a good start on it. It's a half inch. On the end piece. There we go, that's nice and tight. Okay, I've got my tape on the other end, and now it's just in time to install the cable. I'm gonna run it up and through that hole. All right, we've got it started. I'm going to get this on, tightened up, and then should be good to go. Okay, so the one is half, the other is 9 sixteenths. Okay, now I think what I'm actually going to do is also run my water temp gauge through here, run that gauge back in through there, Put the grommet on and seal it up there. Alright, hopefully I've got a path to follow. Okay, these do come folded up, but you really don't want to bend them much more. I'm going to bend them to straighten it out, run it through, and try not to bend it too much more, because that can really damage the component inside. All right, look at that. Got a little path to follow. This uh, got fed all the way down through that hole. Just going to return the uh, temp gauge up through there. Okay, I think I got it fed up in there. Let's see how it goes. All right, worked out very well. I think what I will do is run this along through here, come down through here, and attach there. And this is just going to attach into the back of the oil pressure gauge. Um, and that's good. We're pretty much good for out here until I get that attached. Almost forgot. Got to pass through this piece here that attaches uh, this down onto that. Since I've got the yellow out, Don't want to go super tight on this. There you go. And if I've got any leaks, I can tighten it down a little more. So our cooling gauge is hooked up. I've got the oil pressure gauge hooked up to the block. Just need to hook it up to the back of the gauge now. So what I've got is a length of red wire, length of black, going to connect the black wires, which are the ground wires, together on the back of the harness and then attach them to one wire and I'm going to run this up to uh, the firewall. And then I'll ground it out on the firewall. The red line I can use to run over to the fuse box. Um, in my case, I'm not going to be able to wire it all up because as you can see, I still have to do my wiring, but I'll show you 
where to wire it in the fuse box and two different kinds of fuse boxes. So let me get my wire cut and uh, we'll splice the wires from the uh, gauges together and get rolling. Yeah, I messed that up. If you cut any of your wires, start over. So I've got my red wire. Don't need as much black because I'm just running it up to the firewall. Just gotta find the beginning. And then I've got my black wire. This is what I will attach to the firewall. Okay, got my three positive wires in there. Okay, I've got my negative cables spliced together. And this end will ground out. I think I'm going to want to place it right about here. It's just to the left of the ashtray. Should give me enough room. Hopefully, when I'm sitting here, that my knee's not going to hit it. And, yeah, going to be a little tricky with this dangling in the way, but that should be the best position. Let's see if I can mark it with silver marker. So I got this secured up here. We're good to go. I uh, just need to put everything back in. For my voltmeter, we also hook up a separate negative and a positive. So I've got my negative. So both of these negatives will go to the firewall and ground. So I'll have a ground for the lights and then a ground for the voltmeter. And I need to create a separate red positive cable that I can hook up to uh, power that's only on when the key is switched on. Okay, I'm going to uh, mount the uh, gauges back up, but one thing I've got to keep in mind is the uh, voltmeter actually has these sort of rubber grommets. Uh, I'm guessing it's to keep it from grounding out. Um, and then this, these the ones without the grommets are the ones for the oil pressure and the water tone. So I'm going to go ahead and put those back on now. Just going to get them in here for now and then snug them tight once I make sure the dials are horizontal. And I just realized before I start um, attaching that oil pressure gauge, I'd better get everything all set up here uh, with my attachments that will help me fit onto the back of the oil pressure gauge. So I better tape everything up. Alright, so I've got my tape on this thread. I will tighten these up and then I will put the thread on, or I will put the tape on this one tighten that one up and then we can attach it to the back of the pressure gauge.
All right, let's feed it through. And let's get our tape on here. Okay, I've got that one taped up now. And I'll tighten that down and we'll be good to go with our oil pressure. Okay, last is the voltmeter and as you can see this right side is positive, it's got a little plus sign, left side is negative. So I'm going to put the clamp up there and then also uh, the positive and negative cables. Okay, and there we go. I've got the positive cable coming out, the ground wire coming out, and now it's just a matter of dropping our bulbs back in. So yeah. Um, not going to connect the grounds because I'm not sure what all I'll be doing with this whole rewiring project. I still need to take down the steering wheel, pull everything out of the dash, get back behind here and all of that. So what you're looking for is connecting both of these. Uh, I suppose I could have actually done them into one. But you want to put a bolt through the holes, attach it directly up into the firewall if you can. Do not attach to anything with paint on it. If it's got paint on it, you will not have a good ground. So you might have to sand away a little spot, or if you can find something that's up far enough in there, as long as those wires won't get in your way, and then just attach a bolt, maybe through something that's existing, that's already up there. But you're looking for anything along the firewall that's metal on metal. There's a bolt that's going through there. Like I said, you could drill a hole and put a bolt through there and then put it through the two holes. But that's how you want to ground it. Just make sure you don't have any rust, make sure there's no paint there, and you should have a, a really good ground. If for some reason, when you get everything put together, you get everything connected and you're seeing that it's not working, you don't have lights and you don't have a good voltmeter reading, then there's a good chance that maybe the ground isn't on there tight enough or that it's up against paint. Looking good. Got everything nice and level. I would prefer to have cooling, oil pressure, and voltmeter, but uh, because this one was pretty much run through there, I just went with it there. I can live with that. I ain't mad about it. Like I said, I'm in the middle of the rewiring project, so I can't show you how to make the light connections or the connection for the voltmeter. But I can show you what I would do if I had the kind of fuse box that has either the glass ones or the kind that have the two little pieces, that the prongs that stick into it. So either, either way, this is what I would do. You would connect the red wire from the lights to your instrument panel. Uh, in this case, it says gauges. And what I use, um, you can either hook it into the accessory section here if you've got that. Um, but what I also have used, I'm not sure if you can make this out, but this is a an adapter that, uh, that goes around the metal part of the fuse and all you have to do is take that red wire plug it directly in and then you're connected to the same fuse that the dash lights or the instrument panel lights are connected to um, I can put a link to these down below this is if you have the kind that has the little glass fuse and the metal pieces on either end um, it's a little copper strip that goes around the metal part and sticks out. And then all you all you have to do is just take this kind of connector, stick it on there, and it's connected. That way, whenever you turn your dash lights on, it gets power directly to this red wire that will light your dash lights. Uh, where'd it go? Okay, so if you have an, a newer style uh, fuse panel, the kind that has these with the two prongs where you just plug them in, same thing goes. You want to do it to the instrument panel or gauges, whichever it's listed. And this is for the three lights. And then if you've got this kind, what I have is an adapter. This adapter plugs into the fuse and then you run your wire into this piece here. You crimp it down and then all you have to do is just slide that the fuse you took out 
down into this piece. So then they, this has a fuse. Your, your, your wiring is now fused to that same box and you're good to go. Now, to install the uh, power for the voltmeter, the red wire that's for the voltmeter, you can use this in the newer style. Also, just do another one of these, run your wet red wire into here, plug that into the fuse box, or use the little tap that goes in on the round the metal piece and the glass one. And what you want to attach that to is anything with key on power. Okay, so what happens is, is then when you've got that wire connected in here to the key on only, then when, as soon as you turn your key on, that's going to send power to the voltmeter. It's going to see hopefully 12 volts. And when you're running the car, you'll hopefully see the 14 volts. But you'll connect it to the on power whenever there's keyed switch. Do not connect it to always on power. In other words, if you get out of the car, take the key out, and your voltmeter still says 12, that's bad because it's going to keep sending power to the voltmeter only when the key is on. The one thing that I have always connected it to is the radio. So if you've got a fuse for radio, use your adapter or connect it directly into your fuse box if you know how to do that. I don't know how to do that. Um, if you, I use the adapters and I connect it to the radio. The radio usually only works when it's an accessory or when it's keyed on. That's my advice to you for connecting it to your fuse box. I, unfortunately, I can't show the, the uh, power working. I can't show the lights. And I don't have any battery connected to this yet. There's still a million wires that I've got to take care of. So can't show you it yet. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you've got anything wrong, leave them in the comments. Or if you're just not sure about something, let me know. Like the uh, video if you got anything out of it. I'd appreciate it. And subscribe if you can. I'm continuing to do more projects on my 68 Pontiac Le Mans. And I'd love it if you could join me. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we will catch you next time.